Good morning, Micah 7 7. Today we're continuing on in our 30 and 30 scripture memorization and also our focus of if I were your enemy. Today will be day two on relationships. And if you have not had a chance to listen to Sister April's powerful word that she brought us yesterday about how the enemy uses toxic relationships to bring divide in the body, I want you to go back and listen to that today because it is a powerful word. Our scripture for today is going to be found in 1 John 3 and 18, and I'm actually going to read it in the Amplified. I will post it in the King James, but I want you guys to hear what the Amplified says about this verse. And in the other verses I read today in this chapter, they will also be in the Amplified. So I would encourage you, um, if you don't have an Amplified Bible, to look it up online today and really savor these words. It says, little children, let us not love merely in theory or in speech, but in deed and in truth, in practice and in sincerity. So the next few minutes, we're just going to look at this scripture and how the view of how the enemy would want us to love and how God calls us to love. So when you read it in the King James, it lets you know, let us not love merely in word. That may be confusing for some because when you look at the word of God, it tells you over and over again that death and life are in the power of the tongue and the importance of words in bringing encouragement and how it can bring life. But the words that John is talking about here are not those kind of words. It is those empty words. Empty words come when we love people from a self-focus. When we hear that there's a need, and we've all been there, I've done it, and you say, hey, just call me if you need anything, or you make an offer to help that person, but you really have no intention of doing that. The empty words are done to make self feel better. But in reality, it would be going out of our comfort zone. It would be going out of what we already have obligations to do to help fulfill that need in someone else. So in this scripture, God is letting us know that we need to love in deed and in truth. We're going to break both of those down and see what that really means. So deed indicates an action. And if you study out love in the word of God, you're going to see that love is an action word. It is not merely giving um, lip service, but it is truly putting um, hands and feet to our words. It is action. If you look back at Mark 12, um, starts at verse 29, you're going to see God describe um, how he expects us to love and why it is so, so important. So in that passage, the scribes ask Jesus the greatest commandment, and he lets them know the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, love the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. But this is what I want you guys to see. His very next words are, And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So it goes on, and the scribes who've been listening, they reply, And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offering and sacrifices. And when Jesus heard their response, he answered, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. So you can see here, he was teaching them a concept that was probably different than what they had experienced. It's different than what our culture teaches us. 
The world promotes self-focus. And the enemy loves when we love out of empty words because he would prefer you to use those empty words because empty words are a breeding ground for sensitivity to offense. Empty words allows room for the enemy to work. But you know what? When you show up in a situation where someone has a need, when you show up, It shows Jesus. April's devotion yesterday also brought an interesting point. Do we just show up for those that we love, those that give back to us, those that are our dearest friends? Or do we show up for the ones that God loves? God, when he says neighbor and brother and words like that in the Bible, He means all of those he loves, and that's everyone, not just those that are going to be able to pay us back, not just those who are going to be kind to us when we show God's love, but it's to each and every one. And often in my own life, I have seen that God will call me to those hard cases the ones that I would really prefer not to show love to because I do have a fear of rejection in those relationships. But it is when I step out in obedience and humility that God meets me there. I have watched Him restore relationships because I am walking by faith. I am walking in His truth and I am allowing His love to be an action verb in my life. Now, some of you may be thinking, how am I going to love everyone? You know, I have a a family, I have a job, I have all of these other obligations. So how am I going to truly love indeed? And I want to share a secret with you. If you were at ladies conference this weekend, you already know this secret. But if you weren't, it is that you are going to find that secret place. Because it is in that secret place that you become spirit-led. It is in that secret place that He is going to equip you with boldness and courage. It is in that secret place you meet Him and the purpose for your life is revealed. It is in those those times spent in prayer that you ask Him, God, who are you leading me to today to show your love in deed and truth? And it is believing when you exit that secret place that you are walking in the Spirit. You are not allowing the enemy's tactic of self-focus and self-isolation and fear of rejection to prevent you from walking in the love that God is calling you to. And it is in that place that he is going to meet you there and prepare you with exactly what you need to show love to a world that is lost and dying, a world that is longing for that relationship with a brother or sister in the Lord. And I am believing that God is going to give us that clear direction as we walk forward in spirit and truth. I'd like to pray that over us today. God, you are so good, Lord. God, we thank you for your word, Lord. God, we thank you for the truth of your word, Lord. God, that brings illumination into our lives, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord. God, that you are clearly showing us how the enemy would want to bring a divide into our relationship, how he would want to keep us separated, Lord, how he would want us, Lord, to focus on ourselves and not others. God, I'm praying today, Lord, God, that you plant something in each of our spirits, Lord. God, that we will want to reach out to others, Lord. God, that we will want to show your love, Lord, that we will be your hands and feet, that we will love those around 
around us, Lord, in action, Lord. God, that we will show them, Lord, God, how each and every day, Lord, God, that you can fulfill their needs through their brothers and sisters in you, Lord. God, give us the words to speak that we will edify, Lord, that we will bring life, Lord, as we show up in these situations, Lord, because we know that when we show up, that we show you, Lord, that your light shines through us, Lord. God, and we're believing, Lord, that you are going to equip us, Lord. You are going to teach us, Lord. You're going to give us boldness and courage, Lord. God, to walk in your spirit, Lord, to be led by your spirit and to be led by truth. Lord, we love you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you each have a blessed and wonderful day. And I'm going to be praying that God gives each of you a divine appointment today so that you can show His love in action.